Oh, my God. 
was made it back here that was made here in Columbus. I was just about and to have one. Company. Company. I do have one hanging have, on my wall. I have the middle one and the black one. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if he got where he got them from. Somewhere in his family. Well, well, they probably sold them via catalogs too and shipped them all over. Well, I don't know what number his family got it before him. Yeah, they came from Columbus. It's funny they made it back here. Wow. Oh.
Sitting up with the dead. My mom had to do that when she was a kid. <laughs> Except there's a real body in that case. And in her case, sadly, it was her little sister.
Hi folks, sorry, I got your caps here. If everybody, if you're new here, if you can kind of gather over this spot, 
So I can talk to you a little bit, okay? We, we, we missed the very end. I mean, we were at the very end. So okay, good. You can correct me if I say something wrong. Oh my gosh, we don't know anything. All right. Oh, I need a corpse. Thank you. Perfect. Back in is the best thing. What is your name? Kennedy. Kennedy? Oh, that's nice. Presidential. <laughs> that's a good thing. Ladies and gentlemen, show some respect. Kennedy is no longer with us. We're going to mourn her in just a few minutes. If Kennedy owes you any money, you may now proceed to go through your pockets. Good <laughs> luck. Okay, so uh, welcome to Barrymore's funeral home. We're going to do professional mourning. Um, I'm sounding like a broken record here, uh, but normally I need to hear a half hour, hour. They already told me no. They need you to move around and see everything here. So they, they said, um, come on in here. Over on this side. Come on, love. Olivia. Okay, everybody in here? There's a few chairs if anybody feels they need to sit down, by all means, you can do that. Interesting enough, who knows what Undertaker's original uh, job was? Build the caskets. No, that's what that's what made them Undertaker's. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Nice try, but what was originally did they do? They were furniture makers. Furniture makers, cabinet makers, carpenters. So they were familiar with tools, wood, that sort of thing. And uh, why were they called undertakers? <laughs> well, it was considered the family's responsibility to take care of all the burial needs for a beloved family member. But when the cabinet maker, furniture maker, started making burial containers, the man of the house no longer was making them. The undertaker was undertaking his responsibility. It had nothing to do with putting under the ground. The family were still doing that or sometimes they had a uh, sexton at the church that would do it, or you could hire somebody, somebody that needed a job to do it. But generally speaking, it was a family that did it themselves. So Kennedy's over here dead, and is he in a coffin or a casket? Coffin. Oh, coffin. Exactly, how did you know it was a coffin? Cartoons. Okay, <laughs> cartoons. Because that is a casket. You're right. Funerals. But how do you tell the difference? It's a shape. Exactly, it is a shape. She's in a six-sided coffin. One, two, three, four, five, six. They don't count the bottom or the top. They also have an eight-sided model. Now, the Americans came along and said, we don't need the European six or eight-sided. We can do it with four. So originally, they called that a smooth-sided coffin. But later, they changed the name to casket. Un parle français? Oui? Comment? Qu'est-ce qu'il French? Français? Qu'est-ce que c'est? Qu'est-ce qu'il dit? No, qu'est-ce qu'il dit? Oui! Je ne sais pas. A box you keep something precious in. Okay? It's an old French word, box you keep something precious in. If you have a jewelry box, that's a casket. Okay? So if you have any small people that die, you can use your jewelry box. Okay. Oh my goodness, I just got a smile. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to do three things tonight for you to become professional mourners. And then I'm going to ask Kennedy to pick which one is the best professional mourner. Okay, so she's not happy the same day, okay? So, first thing will be sad, second thing will be uh, crying, and the third thing will be wailing, okay? Now, let me ask you this. We have a young man here. Is this your mom? Yeah. Okay, I've been authorized by a client to, buy, to pay for one professional mourner. Do I pick him or do I pick her? Her. Him. Her. Him. Why him? Because he's the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of his face without no no due respect, due respect. he has a very innocent angelic face. I'm sorry ma'am, but no longer. I made this face. It's great. It's great. But you didn't keep it. <laughs> so he's gonna lose it eventually too. But right now, uh, when I teach him to look sad and cry, and people see him looking sad and crying, they go that innocent little angel looks so sad. <laughs> They're Victorians, so kind of, you know, kind of thing. So anyway, so we're going to do this, uh, and I know when you're, when you're looking sad, 
Uh, the children in the village are going to try to make you laugh or at least smile. So I'm going to come around when you're looking sad and I'm going to try to make some of you laugh or smile and I'll fire you on the spot. Okay? <laughs> so on three, one. By the way, I always think of it when I was a child coming home from school, smelling somebody cooking liver and onions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, it's a terrible memory. Okay, on three, one, two, three. Oh, that's a smile. You're fired. Fired. Oh, that's not fair with that costume. <laughs> fired. 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 Me fired. <laughs> I think the whole group here is fired. <laughs> okay, uh, something you didn't make that first tip. Do you agree? Yeah. yeah, they were pretty bad, weren't they? Okay, the second one now is crying. Okay, now you don't really have to cry, but we recommend this if you think you're going to smile or laugh. Okay? So let me demonstrate for you, and then I'm going to ask everybody to do it. All right? You just bend over, cover your face with your hands, you do a little jiggle up and down. Now you can laugh, you can do anything, and it'll sound like a cry. <laughs> All right? On three. One, two, three. So the whole funeral procession is you looking sad and crying, okay? Uh, when we get to the uh, graveyard, the hearse pulls in, and you have the, um, who am I thinking of, the guys that hold the, uh, Paul, Bear. Paul Bear, thank you. Uh, they come over to the hearse, they grab it, and they do that little walk that they have to the open grave, okay? Um, right before they lower it into the ground, the undertaker will look at his professional mourners, and they'll go, and you bust out into the loudest wail you can give, it will shock everybody. But they'll love it. They'll love it. Okay, that's a crazy big party. Okay. And we know how they work. Right, Kennedy? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I have to tell you a little story, though. Um, next door used to be the toy store. Okay, so we had a lot of little kids over there. And then we had this nice little old lady that used to work over there. And she didn't appreciate wailing. And every time my group would wail, I go, she was loud for the little lady. And she'd park herself by that door, and I get a tongue lashing about, you're making too much noise, you're scaring the children, stop that immediately. Well, I would just look as contrite as I could. And as soon as she left, I go, she stopped. Actually, she's no longer with us. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so, I'm going to do a wail. Um, if there's somebody here that's a little bit sensitive with their ears, hearing, you might want to block them or maybe step out on the porch, whatever. But it is loud. It should be. And Harvest is going to check the green. If you're doing it loud enough, people in the green will stop doing what they're doing and turn towards the funeral parlor to see what's going on. We had one group tonight that was probably really pretty good. The others were just kind of, mm, so I'm challenging you to give me your best, all right? So did I do my will yet? No. No, okay, so again, here it comes. All right? Best whale you can give me. On three. One, two, three. I don't know why that is. 
I get girls that get into it and they throw themselves on the ground, you know, rolling around it. This floor is dirty. And, and I go, you're over the top. You're over the top. Calm down a little. Boys, although you're good. This guy is good. Okay, uh, I'm done. If anybody has any questions for me, I'll be here. Ask me if anybody wants to go into the uh, coffin here. By all means, take a picture. I like to send them out for Christmas to people I don't like. And I say, I wish you were here. Very solid, very solid. They get it, though. They do get it. Uh, if anybody wants to look, we have a 19th century embalming figure. This one, what was used during the Civil War. It's French. Um, we have some artifacts here from the Victorian time. They like to wear black, etc., etc. Uh, we have a cooling table. This is what we did the embalming on at the person's home. They also used it to try to preserve the body. They would put ice under there, so maybe the undertaker couldn't get to the person right away. If it was during the winter, no problem. They probably stick me in a barn, throw some canvas on you, keep the rats off. Okay, and as soon as they got time, they would then try to serve it. Summer, it's a problem. They have to get through the ground and keep using it. We also have an artificial bed here because weights were done in the home. Are you familiar with this system? This is the French And just barely. It's based on a circulatory system. So what they do is they drain the blood. Okay, and it has to go in uh, nice and whatnot. Uh, get rid of urine, get rid of feces, uh, food that might still be in the body. Uh, and then they would use the embalming fluid. Hmm. And they were using much safer things. They used to use things like mercury and whatnot. Uh, or, yeah, now yeah. they're using for yeah. 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 like Not great to work with, but it's a lot better than what they used to. Oh. <laughs> They're still using it today. Yes, that's right. Very sad. No, very no. Dead. eye caps. They put it on the, they lift the eyelid, and they put it on the eye, and then they put the eyelid over it. The little rough part hopefully will keep it up. Now, after rigor mortis is finished, the body becomes very relaxed. Middle of the week, you don't want the eyes flying open. That, that's true. Yes. And By the way, means you look at it. There's part of it over here, too. Do they still use straw to stump with? Do they use it like this? Uh, like I said, when they're doing this, they used to, like the Europeans would have a bag, and they would use strong chemicals like uh, mercury. Uh, and just throw the body in this bag, let it soak around for several days. <laughs>
Years ago, that looked like this. I was down there in Grands, Kentucky, and they still had the stuff set up. Of course, that was a, ooh, close to 60 years ago, so <laughs> I may have updated a bit. <laughs> well, I've heard of people wanting to get ahead in the world, but uh, this is carried a bit too far. <laughs> As long as you don't lose your head, right? <laughs> Y'all have a good evening.
I know, but don't eat it because I've been sitting around for a while. Would you like cheese? Oh yeah, the escape compasses. Very cool. Yeah, those are neat. I think those work. <laughs> 